Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now the goal for this video is simple. By the end, I want to have everything ready for me to assemble that short block. And that is what will be the case by the end of the video. But for this video, you're going to have to bear with me. There's a lot of clearance checking, there's a lot of numbers, and there's a lot of probably boring um, procedures that we have to do but they're absolutely essential to make sure that that engine has a chance of being a reliable and powerful engine. So, just to recap, the crank was at the machine shop currently because the oil clearances were a little bit too tight. So, in this video, we've got to get that crankshaft back, we've got to verify those clearances, and hopefully they are now within spec. We've also got to do a bit more balancing on the comrods and the pistons, and we've also got to gap the piston rings so uh, quite a lot of work to do in this video let's get started by gapping the piston rings it's quite a simple process to check your ring gaps um, and using this formula here we can see that uh, Wiseco have given me a big table here with loads of formulas on and it helps you to calculate what your desired ring gap should be but for now let's just get a base figure what are the ring gaps um, and then we can take you from there. The compression rings is never super obvious which way round they go, but the dark one is a dark cast steel or something, cast iron I think it is. It's got a chamfer taken out of it. That goes on the bottom, and then the stainless one goes on the top. So um, piston one, which is gearbox side, I don't know if it is, but that's just the way I'm marking them out. So piston one um, will be this side, so I'm going to insert the ring, it's quite simple, you push it in, there's a dot on the upside, so we want that facing up, and then to get the ring level, we just push it down with the piston. So you can see there the piston ring and it's um, perfectly flat now because we use the piston to, to seat it. Now we've got to get a feeler gauge and measure the size of the gap there and we're just going to record the size for now. So if you're wondering what a feeler gauge is, this is a feeler gauge. Um, I'm going to clean it up before I use it. But uh, you have all these different markings and numbers and each of these tabs is a specific thickness. So basically, whatever tab fits in, if the next size up starts to have resistance or doesn't fit, then we know what the size of that ring gap is. 0 0.23. Nope. Zero point two one. Okay, so we've got the ring gaps recorded. Um, just gives us a sort of idea of roughly where they are. So the top ring is zero point one three, zero point one two, zero point one three, zero point one one. And then second rings zero point two, zero point one nine, zero point two, zero point one six. So not too far out, but um, as you can see, they're a little bit all over the place. Um, once they have been manually gapped, they should be absolutely identical then across the board. It's very important that once we do gap the rings, we don't get them mixed up because once they are gapped, they will be specific to the cylinder that they are gapped for. Uh, you'll notice as well from the readings I took originally, they're always tight. Uh, that is so that you can always take off a bit of the piston ring. Whereas if they come too loose, there's nothing you can do about that. So they always tend to come a little tight. But what ring gap am I going for? Because every application, every engine, every bore, they all have a different ring gap. Um, even going to forge pistons will give me a different target ring gap. The, the power I'm chasing, how much boost. Well, Wiseco takes all the guesswork out of it. And they give a very helpful uh, instruction uh, sort of leaflet here. Now um, I'm torn between going for the medium boost or the high boost gap. Now technically my turbo should max out on pump fuel 
my engine will probably start getting detonation if I exceed 35 psi. So I'm not going to be going way over 30. Um, I'm probably going to be hovering realistically around 30 to 33 psi. Even though we're not going way over 30, I am still going to go with the 30 plus ring gap to be safe. If we go a little loose, we're going to get a little bit of blow by perhaps, maybe lose a few horsepower, 10 horsepower maybe. But um, if we go too tight, well, the engine's going to blow up immediately. So um, we're going to err on the side of caution and go a little loose with what Wiseco recommend. So here's some calculations. Um, these are my bore, 88 mil bore. Um, if I'm going for the 30 plus spec, I need a target ring gap of 0 0.027 for the top and bottom ring. If I'm going for the 15 to 30 psi gap, it says um, for the top ring, I would go uh, 0 0.24. So here's a piston ring up close. When you take the meat off, it's important that when they do butt up like this, that the, they touch together. If you was to file it on a funny angle, um, you don't want to do that because you're basically allowing more blow by than is necessary and they're going to touch um, the high points will touch first sanding I done there it's taking it up from 0 0.013 to 0 0.014 so I just got to repeat the process slow and steady So all the top rings are now gapped, they're all exactly the same, 0 0.026 goes straight in, 0 0.028 if you give it a bit of pressure it will go in, but it won't go in all the way. So um, they're about 0 0.027 which is really where um, Wiseco said we should have them. So I'm just going to do the other rings off camera, it's a similar process. So the second set of rings have been gapped. Now let me just explain some of the, the reasoning behind the specs I've chosen. Now, generally speaking, I'll show you the piston here. Um, they tend to run a, a slightly larger gap on the second compression ring. The reason for that is we can have a bit of blow by, we can have a lot of pressure in the cylinder, but what we can't have is combustion getting backed up between the first and second compression ring. So what they tend to do, they'll have a tighter clearance on the top piston ring so that if it does get past the top ring, it's not gonna then have to fight the second ring because the clearance is a bit looser on the second. So it can then go straight out into your crankcase and out your breathers. So the reasoning behind the clearances I've chosen here uh, um, I've gone 0 0.027 on the top ring which is a little tighter than what Wiseco recommend because um, on this particular application if we look at high boost there it's uh, 0 0.08 multiplier for both rings but every other possible combination you can see that they want a looser second ring. So I've sort of gone for a hybrid between these two applications. Um, so I've gone 0 0.27 on the top ring, which is still very loose um, and it's going to be absolutely fine at uh, well over 35 psi at that sort of clearance. Um, but then the second ring um, I opened it up just a little to 0 0.28 so you can't actually go to 0 0.277 on a feeler gauge so it would have been 0 0.28 anyway but it's a very very snug 0 0.028 so um, it barely fits so what does that mean to recap then it means we've got nice loose piston ring gap on the top so the engine is really built from the ground up designed to be pushed hard, to run hot um, and basically to be abused. So we're, we're sort of building it for that purpose. We're not building it for daily driving. Um, you know, it's not 
being tuned the ring gaps the main clearances they're not designed for that but they are going to be in the element really on the track so um, with that looser second clearance as well it just means that the combustion is not going to get backed up um, between those rings as well so that's my thought process behind it I've used Wiseco's information and I've put a little bit of the forums recommendations and I've, that's what I've come out with so I think that's a good solution um, so yeah on to the next part of the build there's lots I'm doing off camera to get ready for the build but one of the things is um, obviously balancing the com rods and pistons now the com rods were pretty close because I've matched the com rods previously and then I matched the brand new one the pistons I haven't touched them and what I've done is I've got all the measurements here of the rods all the measurements here of the pistons and then um, I've tried my best to put the highest weight say rod with the lightest piston and vice versa so the total assembly weight then we have a 970.7 then 970.7 970.8 and 970.7 so that's, a, that's very very close um, they say if you're building a performance engine try and get them within a gram so we're 10 times closer and as I said on a factory engine they tend to be within about 5 grams so uh, yeah pretty happy with that and uh, I've marked the pistons and rods so I can put them in the right order when I put them in the engine. So some good news, I got the crankshaft back today. So as you can see, there's a lot going on. Um, even though the crank's been gone, I've cleaned up the block. So I'm gonna just basically redo what I did a couple of videos ago. Um, fit the crankshaft, fit all the bearings, lubricate the threads, torque it all up to spec, um, and then see what the plastic gauge readings are. So let's get to it. So let's cut to the chase, it's in spec, which is great. Now if we have a look here, um, really it was main journal 3 wasn't it before that was causing this issues because the tightest spec is 0 0.036, it's now 0 0.04, so well within the range um, and all the others, they were in spec anyway, but I asked them to just polish them all because if in doubt go a little looser, so they're a little looser than they were but they're still in spec. So it's just given us a bit more headroom really um, and allowed us to have a little bit looser clearances, which especially when you're building a track car engine, that's really what you want to be doing. The cranks in spec, the rings are done, rods are balanced, pistons are balanced. We can, in the next video, we can assemble this short block. I've even cleaned it off camera. This block is absolutely spotless. So. We're ready to build the engine in the next video. So finally, we've gone through all the mind-boggling numbers and clearances and everything like that. And um, we've persevered and I've got all the clearances in spec. So um, in the next video, I'm actually ready now. The block is cleaned up, the crank's ready, the rings are ready, the rods and pistons are balanced. I'm ready now to assemble the short block. So that is the plan for the next video but if you want to get more stevo content or you want to see a bit more of me in the meantime follow me on instagram now if you go on my youtube page there is a link and you can click that but um it's actually at drive dev so um follow me on instagram and you'll get to see sort of behind the scenes uh stuff on stevo and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already make sure you click that subscribe button uh, down below so you don't miss that next video on the short block build. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.